Okay, so the purpose of this video is to go over the S7 a driver and I'm literally I'm on the iFix side now so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to uh, open up iFix and I'm going to uh, configure the S7 a driver and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import uh, all of the variables that I had with um, the previous video Right, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test one specific uh, one one specific uh, bit value being triggered uh, by an iFix uh, script, and then I literally just show how the um, how the value is actually uh, being triggered inside the iFix database itself. Then I'm going to open up the S7 driver, and you'll see. The individual uh, value being triggered there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that camera twist it around and point it at the PLC at the same time and then just talk a little bit further from that I uh, but uh, right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first off install uh, the s7a driver that can be installed um, I'll go over maybe the internet uh, no I won't bother showing it if you, if you literally Search S7 A driver. You'll be brought to uh, you'll brought you'll be brought to a website that will allow you uh, download a trial edition of it. There's nothing difficult in it, so I'm not going to bother doing it. I uh, one thing I have here then is I have the digital I O uh, Siemens program, and that's going to be very very important uh, for when I'm actually configuring uh, addresses and so on and variables uh, inside the the iFix program itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the S7 a driver. So it's going to be installed as a fix32 or iFix um, iFix server and put it down as server yeah. So then just the name is actually going to be fix, right? Uh, this is important uh, to know this, especially if you're scripting or anything like that, right? And and where this specific uh, driver is going to be installed, it's going to be installed in with the with the GE uh, iFix software. Now it should just take a second. It's very very small, very very fast. And there we are. We're done. Okay. So one of the things I didn't do in the in the previous video was uh, configure or set up. The, the S7 a driver so that's something that I am going to do uh, right now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch uh, iFix this iFix 4.5 uh, it's a demo edition that I got my hands on um, a while ago it was free to download off the internet but for some reason it's not uh, it's easily available it basically runs in demo mode uh, for two hours without um, without a license key Okay, so the very first thing that you want to do, right, is you want to go down to a uh, system configuration, and then what you would just want to do is click this guy. This is for OPC servers. As you can see, the node name here is Fix, right? Uh, that was very important, right? And then the actual database, right, with uh, with all kinds of values and all that kind of stuff, right? That's uh, just simply called database, right? So just click this guy, right, and then you'll have the IO drivers, right? The only one that's there is the simulation driver right now. So uh, what I'm going to do is it, it'll do an automatic search for the drivers that are available. I'm after installing the S7A driver. Yeah, okay, that's grand. Just go to add that. Great. Now I'm going to configure it. Okay, so when I open the S7A driver, I'm just going to see all these different connection types, right? The only one that I'm really interested in is this guy PG. So there's these things enable and disable so I'm just going to take those off right I'm going to enable this because as I said in the previous video I have a PG a uh, PC PG interface just get rid of that, that's wrong. okay so just leave this as it is then 
this thing is very very important here right that you already have your you have your um, your PC PG interface uh, already installed so if I just go here to control panel uh, put a classic view and you probably recognize this exact uh, form for when you're using a somatic manager and when you're selecting how you want to actually make a download to your uh, to your PC or run values and all that kind of stuff so anyway that guy is already in there uh, if, if that isn't there it won't automatically come up and it won't work in the way that I'm doing it over this uh, over this video now I uh, right so I'm gonna just get rid of this right and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a new device right I'm gonna give it an MPI of 2 this is all grand I am yep so now I'm going to create a new data block. Data block 59, all this. But anyway, a uh, DB1, and then I'm going to give it uh, seven elements. Just happens to be uh, from what 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 I had previously. I just had a number of different bits and bytes and all that kind of stuff in this data block in the previous video. And I'm going to set this to manual. Okay, and there we are right now. I'm going to enable that. Okay, just data monitor. Oh, it's disabled. I don't know. Can't see it right now, unfortunately. So I'm just going to save this guy right now. Device. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename that to S7 300. Right, and then with DB1, I'm just going to get, I have it there as 1, so that's playing right now, so I'm going to take a look at the data monitor, and then I can see that there, that's perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to see if I have a variable table. There we go, so have that value. Grand. Okay, so that's fine. I'm actually just triggering an input there. That's making the DB1, DB6 go fine. So basically, anyway, what we can do is we can monitor our values from here. Let's just move out. So this guy is configured properly right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna shut this guy down. I'll actually just save first. So in summary, what I basically have is just a set up a PC PG interface with something called S7300 as a device. Then I have a data block uh, called DB1, and it's pointing at the address of DB1 inside the actual PLC itself. Okay, so then we just go okay. Shut this guy down. So we're back in iFix right now. Okay, so what we have to do now is we have to actually get our values in, and then we have to get a. Um, we have to get the S7A driver coming up here and the S7A power tool accessible from the IO driver's uh, menu button. 